Today, I'm walking amongst the ruins of Agurmi, which was the capital of Siwa in the ancient times. It's basically composed of a huge rock that rises above the plain, where many palm trees used to grow, and there was a plenty of water. But in the Middle Ages, barbarians and Arabs invaded Agurmi, and many inhabitants left. In 1926, heavy rain fell on the city, so most of these houses were ruined and destroyed, leaving just an empty space of debris. And that's why the rest of the inhabitants of Agurmi left too. But today, the lanes and all these houses stand still as a witness for the antiquity of the city of Agurmi. The local history of Siwa is written in a book called the manuscript of Siwa and it's kept at one of the credible families of the oasis. According to that book, the ancient city of Siwa existed during the Pharaonic and the Roman times around a huge rock that rises in the midst of the plain valley amongst the palm trees. The city which was regarded as the capital city of the oasis is called Agurmi. It seems that the locals gathered around the rock that contains the temple of Amon, which is famous as the Oracle Temple. By the end of the Roman period in Egypt, the god's cult came to an end too, and his temples were abandoned. Being nomads, practicality posed itself on the life of the Syrians, and thus, they used the temple and its settlements as a housing area. Moreover, they dismantled its rocks and cut it into small pieces. And with the help of their local strong mud, they built their new houses. A high wall was set at the foot of the rock surrounding Ahurmi's houses to protect them from their greatest fear, the barbarians. On top of the wall, there were small windows, each set composed of three. They would allow the inhabitants of the city to monitor the activities and dangers happening outside. It wasn't long before the barbarians who were Bedouin Arabian tribes passing through the desert, attacked them constantly. In 1203 AD, Agormi's residents began their descent and departure from the city. In other words, they ran for their lives, after their number declined severely to be 40 men belonging to just seven families. They chose a new location where they've built a new city above a mountain so that they may have more protection and live safely. They gave that location a name. They called it Charlie or the city. The second and final immigration from the city happened in 1928 when destructive rain fell over the oasis for three days continuously, causing many houses to demolish and the rifting of the rest. So the residents had no choice but to leave them and build around the foot of Shali's mountain, which grew to become today's new city of Siwa. consecrated for God Amon in Siwa and they are both in Agurmi. The first and the most famous one is the Oracle Temple. It's been
built above the huge rock that lies within the decaying walls of the old city's houses, which were totally abandoned by its inhabitants in the first half of the 20th century. The rock rises about 30 meters above the rest of Siwa, and it takes the shape of a horseshoe. For its northern and eastern and western edges rise and descend gradually until the middle of the hill, while the southern edge is less in height and composes an aisle or entrance to the hill. Agurmi's rock is intervened by many cracks and cuts due to its natural geological formation. For it's composed of layers of limestone separated by layers of green mud. According to Diodorus, the Sicilian historian, the inhabitants of Amun's oasis lived around an acropole, which is surrounded by three walls or sections. In the first section lived the rulers of the oasis and their families in a palace. And in the second section lived the women and children, and the relatives and the guards. As for the third section, lie the soldiers' divisions and the rulers' guards' houses. They all end by the God's Chapel and the Sacred Well. The visitor of Aromi climbs up a narrow aisle with stairs until he reaches the entrance of the city that was once fortified. The gate that's made of palm trunks still stands in its place. And on both sides, there are the mastabas, or the sofas made of clay, where the rulers and the dignified family's men sat and discussed the oasis affairs. The mosque was built above the city's gate, and its minaret was used to call people for prayers five times a day, before loudspeakers were invented. It overlooks a great view of Siwa City with its old destroyed fort and its new houses and the faraway minarets as well as the mountain of the dead. And whenever one looks, he'll see a magnificent view of the gardens of palms and the great salty lakes which water sparkle under the rays of the sun. Right on the left side of the entrance lies a sacred well, which used to supply the temple and its priests with water. The well is cut out at its base, then was completed by building circular walls all the way up. Its diameter is almost two meters, and it narrows downwards and enlarges upwards. Excavations at the stairs that start from the ruler's palace and until the water level in the well showed that some of the stones used have carvings of a king and a god and were meant to be used in building the temple but were disposed of. walk through the ruins of Agurmi and see all these destroyed houses scattered around, you can't help but remember Alexander, yes, the Alexander the Great, and his visit to that place. That visit was so important. In fact, it has immortalized Siwa Oasis. The journey started in winter time, in this exact time of the year, and it started from the fort of Pratonium in Masa Matruh. He was accompanied by a big number of his friends and soldiers. That caravan reached Siwa Oasis in eight days, covering 300 kilometers on the backs of camels. According to the texts written in the sanctuary of Amun's temple, the history of the recent building goes back to the reign of King Amaziz II from the 26th dynasty. But some adjustments and extensions were added in later periods. In front of the temple is an open court 
where the guts procession used to walk. But only the bases of the northern and eastern walls remain. It assumed that the court's entrance was at the axis of the temple and was reached like today by climbing up the cliff. The temple is composed of two halls and a sanctuary, which entrance lies on its main axis. The original height of the temple rises almost 8 meters. It's topped by a cornish 2.22 meters wide with no reliefs. It seems that the builders who came later in the Greek period tried to give it a Greek look so they erected a Dorian column on each side of the entrance. One is lost and the other one still stands. The first court length is 7.47 meters and its breadth is 4.95 meters and its entrance lies exactly in its middle. The second court is slightly higher than the first one but almost similar in dimensions. According to Rike, there were two stages in building, but recent researches suggest three stages and not just two. There are three entrances in the northern wall of the second court. The middle one is wider than the other two and leads to the sanctuary which Alexander entered to listen to the answers of Amon's prophecy. The width of the small entrance to the right is 80 centimeters and leads to a narrow aisle that could have been used as a shelter to preserve the valuable tools of the temple or used during the prophecy by the priests. The northern wall that separates the aisle from the sanctuary has three hatches, 77 centimeters above the ground and the dimensions of each are 52 by 52 centimeters. Close to the ceiling, there are two openings for light. The sanctuary is the only place in the temple that comprises reliefs. Its dimensions are 3.3 meters wide and 6.1 meters long. Like the rest of the temple's chambers, the sanctuary had a ceiling for we can find at the top of the eastern and western walls stone projections on which the wooden beams of the ceiling rests. The walls are badly damaged because of the gold and imaginary treasures diggers who pierced holes in the walls. The Syrians believe that a king called Cherebesh was the last ruler of the Oasis and that he was buried in the temple with his treasures including his weapons and his sword and thus the temple was known as the Sif. sides of the entrance of the sanctuary and continue till the end of the side walls. It seemed that the rear wall had no reliefs before it was badly damaged. On the right wall of the entrance, the king in whose time the temple was built and relieved is pictured. His body and head were removed, but the crown of the north of Egypt is still there. The king is shown presenting wine from a rounded jar to eight gods. His name is written in a cartouche inscribed in front of him. He is Amazis II from the 26th dynasty. As for the eight gods, they stand in one line facing the king and headed by god Amon. Behind him is his wife Mut and the ram-headed god who could be Hosha F. The fourth god is Honso. The fifth and the sixth 
are unidentifiable and the seventh god is Mahisa. On the left side of the entrance of the sanctuary stands Siwa's ruler with his image destroyed except for the feather above his head which signifies his Libyan origin. It's noticed that the ruler wasn't represented walking behind the king like he should be but he was pictured on the facing wall of the chamber and in the same position like the king and presents offering to the eight gods like the king. The reliefs in front of him and associating the gods prove that his name was Sotekh Ardis and his title was the chief of the dwellers of the desert. His father occupied the same position before him and was called Rerwa Teneb. Amongst the eight gods receiving the offerings, we find Amun-Ra and Mut, and God Dedun Amon and Goddess Tifnut. Behind her, the wall is barren from reliefs. That's because in the original design of the temple, there was a door leading to the adjacent room. That door was blocked later. The fifth god is Hursha F and the sixth is Nut. The seventh is Tot, and finally the eighth is Tot's wife, the lady of the two lands, Nehemawa. There used to be one or more chambers on the roof, but their stairs were destroyed when a part of Aghormi's rock collapsed. After the ending of the excavations of Dr. Ahmed Fakhri, to whom Aghormi owes its accurate informative researches and excavations, a German mission headed by Klaus Kormann resumed excavations in the area, starting in 1993. The task aimed at the restoration work, regarding that the Temple of Amon was built over a hill cracked massively, which enables the collapsing of the temple in any moment. The second task was doing more excavations and cleaning, especially in the sanctuary and the front court of the temple, looking for its main entrance and the stairs leading to it. Successfully, Klaus found the tomb beneath the sanctuary, 70 centimeters lower than its base. He has also found that the builders of Ahormi in the past used the hill as a quarry of limestone to level the steep ground of the hill to build the temple and the palace of the oasis rulers and later in the 19th century they cut stones from the temple's constructions to build their own houses the oracle's voice has been silenced many centuries ago and Ahormi's walls no longer repeat the echoes of the music and the chanters stopped singing hymns to God Amon but his mysterious magic can still be felt while tens of voices around Agurmi calls declaring that the time has come for all these ruins to tell their story.